telephone system presents Telephone Time. Telephone Time with the stories of John Nesbitt. What first interested me in the possibilities of this story is that it's about a stepmother. And a stepmother, as I remember from my own childhood bogey tales, is a person who is obliged to go around being about as lovable as a pit viper. And often in the early tales, she would go to the stepchildren and suggest to them that they take a nice long, long walk in the forest and get lost. However, one of the world's great men once remarked much differently about his stepmother, and that put us on the trail of her story. We began by finding a marriage license. It is dated December the 2nd, 1819, at Elizabethtown, Kentucky, and through it, a widow with three children, whose name is given here as Sarah Bush Johnson, will become the wife of a country carpenter from Indiana, with two children of his own waiting for him at home. The second clue will involve one of these children, the boy who resumed his education shortly after she arrived. It is just a badly torn page from one of the little copy books he used, but as the first owner signs his name Abraham Lincoln, it is of course among our cherished national treasure today. Forty years now since she came to our dirt-floored shack in Indiana. And now the books are saying that I knew nothing but poverty and grim toil there. It was never so. It began when father took a business trip to Kentucky and suddenly decided that he'd bring us home a stepmother. And, of course, he came right to his point. And I knowed you as a girl and you knowed me as a boy. I fancied you till you got married. I didn't come here to talk to you soft, Siri. My woman's dead 14 months. I'm wifeless, with nobody to look after my house and young'uns. I heard she died, Tom. She was took. Now, you're a widow with children of your own and no man. I come clear from Indiana to speak to you about this. I wish there was time to court a little. Come to get familiar with you once again. Well, you know me, Siri. I'm not much. I've not got much. I don't drink too much. And I never hit a woman. I wouldn't force a woman to my will. I claim no more than that. Now, even you'd be willing, you can start to pack this afternoon. We can get married in the morning and head for Indiana by noonday. I wish there was time for more fancy in it. Have you told your young'uns that have a new ma? <laughs> I reckon they know it when I told them I might bring back a surprise. Well, shucks, Sari. Even the young'uns know I'd not come clear to Kentucky to waste my time. It don't signify. Tom, I own my own house goods, free and clear. But I owe debts left me when he died. I got $164 for my lawsuit. It was only that that made me feel good enough to come for you, Siri. Then I'm a willing. And I'm pleased and thankful that you want me. Forty years now, and memory isn't clear as to whether Sister Sarah and I really hated her at first for arriving out of the night to usurp our dead mother lying there on the hill. But we were filled with tales of wicked stepmothers, that is sure. Ah. So, so she was a willing to do it, huh? She was a willing. You know they went a sent word ahead. Hand down the Lilies one, Sari. I fixed a place for him when I got the news and had a big fire. It's a roaring. <sighs> oh, hurry on, Sari. Dennis put down plenty of litter to bed him down tonight. Hello, Sari. So you was willing. Evening, Dennis, Hank. Careful. I'd help you with the unloading, but I'm so poorly from a week's jostling over the ruts. I'm as deadbeat as the youngin'. Come on, John. No need in carrying me. I'm big enough and sound to work. You could carry me over the door sill, Tom. We had a door. <laughs> Go on in, Sari. Hello, little 
little Sarah. I'm your new ma. Ain't you half froze, setting up from your cover? You greet her proper. It's all right, Tom. She's asleep with her eyes open. Where's Abraham, Rondo? Thank if I know. Well, I'm dead with chill and sleep. Oh, sleep. surely, sir, surely. It's over here. Uh, Dennis Hanks and me shared the wide bed, but it's cleaned up now. Dennis says you give it a lick in your honor. Good night, Dennis. Good night, sir. We'll go bed down the horses. I'm grateful to you, Dennis. It's all to celebrate the bride. I ought have got drunk. Dennis, where's that cussed boy Abe? Been moping around like a lost dog. He heard the wagon coming and run off. Crazy boy. He and his sister mourn their own dear ma so bad. I figured they'd shout and sing when I got a new one. So I go oh, to... Tom, look. good luck. I knowed Sarah before you was married to Nancy Hanks. And Nancy knowed her too, and there was never shadow on her name. I thank you. Well, let's quit the ceremonies and turn in. I'm half to die asleep myself. Good night. I could have done all the cookings needed around here. <laughs> Your husband sure left you well privy, Sammy. We're gonna have some style around here. Watch that fella, Sam. Yeah, Tom, I ain't no dresser mover. Get on in there. <laughs> I'd know there was so much work undone here. I swear to heaven, I'd have refused you flat in Elizabeth Town. Get in there. You better set her under the loft, sir, or the drip off the roof. Oh, it's too dark in there. Let's put her up against the wall so Sarah can show up her fine dishes atop her. Right here. Wait till you see what I've got in the clothes, Chip. Then just get me a claw hammer and we'll knock this old box off the wall. Twas Ma's. Twas Ma's hidey place for her own things. Oh, please, ma'am. Why don't you keep your own things in it, Sarah? Your mother'd have liked her own daughter to have it. You can put it up there in the loft. You're almost a woman, Sarah, when your pine for a hidey place belongs only to you. I want a hidey box, too. If she can have one, why can't I? We'll all get hidey boxes. Now quit your horn and go on out there and get her goods. Sarah, I want you for something. Don't pay no attention to my kids, Sarah. You said you'd not speak to her unless spoke to. I forgot. The house is hern, but we ain't. Her girl, she's got a fresh new dress. Can I go ask her about her dresses? I'm not stopping that. It ain't her fault. He's a come, Ma, and he's whistling glad of it. He forgot you. Every trace of the grave is lost now, but then it was fresh in my heart as only 14 months could make it. Going there, maybe it was a sign from her I sought, a sign that it was right to take another woman in her place. But she was silent, and I remember nothing but the frozen earth and the dead Jimson weeds rattling in the winter wind. Sari, I've put on 10 pounds in two weeks. You're remarkable cooking. 
Little Sarah Lincoln done good enough in a year or more. She done the cooking before I took over. You're both fat enough. It's hard to please the men folk with cooking, ma'am, when you're only 13. You can go, children. Hold her. Can't I get you children to remember to shut that door? Little more tea, Dennis? About the end of the pinch of it, it brung from Louisville. Dern ninnies. Letting all old winter in. Ever know a youngin' to shut the door without she yelled after him? Oh, well, all children's the same that way. Now, wait a minute, sir. Just wait a minute. I know a little something about carpeting. You shouldn't have no door that swings in so as to take up space inside. Now, you ought to hang her about here and swing her out. Why, well, I never would have thought of that. Found new door swung inside, might wall if one of the children was chasing past. Oh, well, shucks, Tom, we'd have to true up the whole dirt opening with Shim. She's lopsided. I know, so, uh, I know, I know. We level the door, we gotta finish caulking the roof. We finish caulking the roof, and we gotta mud up around the chimney. Now, you gonna stand there and tell me I don't know how to throw up a cabin? You think I'm a boy or something? I do like me a door, Tom. But right about there. A woman likes maybe a little window. Mm -hmm. So as to make certain nothing slips by outside without her knowing it. Well, I reckon we might fix your window if we fix the door. Dennis! She's a horn squaggleless! <laughs> well, I'll be! <laughs> oh, I'm ashamed, <laughs> honest I am, to play such a trick <laughs> on her. <laughs> yes, sir. Maybe right about here, another window. A woman's not to home till she's got a window to put curtains to. Laura, I forgot. Oh, you know what's right, of course. But the door will have to be maybe a hand staying up from the dirt here, won't it? We know how to hang a door, Sari. Do you want the whole of winter roaring in under your door? No. But the bottom of your door should... Well, the door should fit snug against the floor, shouldn't it? Floor? A floor? <laughs> she done it again, Tom. It was Sister Sarah's birthday, and the house was filled with sounds of fun and laughter. But I was still standoffish. I was shy and sullen, and while inside they frolicked, I chopped as loudly as I could. gets to choose the next dance because it's her birthday. Then Miss Sarah Johnson chooses... Hold it. Hold it a minute. I've a scheme. With a heap too many Sarahs in this family. First comes Tom Sarah Lincoln. Then in I come with my Sarah Johnson. And Lord help me, I was baptized Sarah too. <laughs> Look at Tom. She's in a horse-wobbing mood again. Yes, sir. Too many Sarahs. And being as it's Sarah Lincoln's birthday, I wish to announce a little surprise. Hear ye, hear ye. Now my Sarah... Her middle name's Elizabeth, so from now on, we'll call her Betsy. Now, we got two Sarahs left, one too many. So I'll take, if you admire the sound of it, Tom, Sally. Well, how do you do, Sally? Pleased to meet you. And how did you do, How do you do, Betsy? Betsy? Happy to meet you. Well. Is it really, ma'am, that you give me your name for a birthday present? My Bible oath. From this day forth, I'll answer to no name but Sally Bush Lincoln. By gosh, Sally's a fit name. <laughs> and may I have the honor, Miss Betsy? Come on, Betsy, I'll dance with you myself. Come on. Oh, let's play down a while there. Hello, honeybee. Hello. Ma. Sarah was hers for keeps, of course, and something in me waited because I well remember sitting by the fire all years, and I well recall her text. 
O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. That autumn, I was desperate to get more schooling, and I begged the schoolmaster, and I prayed Father wouldn't say no. But when the teacher came, I still played possum, and I tried to catch a word, never dreaming that she would be the one to settle it. I'm standing pat for my own convictions. I'll not be hornswoggle this time. Abraham's lazy enough as it is. Sure he's lazy. He can swing an axe or go hunting. Neither of which he gives a hoot to do. So he mopes around in the sun all day. I won't have it, I won't have it. He reads good already and can cipher some. And if you make a scholar out of him, he won't be good for a lick of real work again. I'm not saying, schoolmaster, I grudge you the three dollars it'd take to school Abe another time. Did he get the call to be a minister or something? It's your privilege, Mr. Lincoln. But the boy shows a natural suitability for reading, ciphering, and declamation. Speech you fine? Why'd he ain't opened his mouth since Sally Bush and me was married and come back from Elizabeth Town to live? I've had my say. Come on, Mr. Hooks. You'll excuse our heat, but she's sought for it and I'm sought again. Sally, we'll talk no more about it. It's your privilege. You folks own the child. I'm sorry, Miss Lincoln. Sure. You'll excuse our heat, Mr. Hooks, and I wish you make out with the new school. One, two, three. I'm wholly a sinner, Lord. Four, five, six. I'm a poor, meek female, Lord. Seven, eight, nine. Thomas Lincoln! Your pardon again, Mr. Hooks. But Mr. Lincoln's forgot something important. Good morning, Mr. Hooks. I know it, Tom. Sally Bush, you've seen my manhood before a man of learning. It was important. Bellering out the door after me like a Jezebel. I'll not have no woman of mine shame me before another man. But it had to be. Why, you practically ordered me in here, and you'll never do no such thing again. It's important to Nancy Hanks. You speak the name of the dead in a family spat? Over Abraham. He was her care. He's my care now. There. I had to do it. Now I've put my hand down, too. When the milk sickness and the fever comes, it's us, the women folks, that nurse and feed each other's children while their mother's vitals burn. And it's us, the women folk, that wash and decently prepare the dead. And your wife, Nancy Hanks, lay dying. Don't you know she wondered what woman would be would lie at your side after her and see her children grow? It was me. It so turned out it was me would lie at your side and see them grow and lose them too. Such a woman as I am that Nancy Hanks was thinking of. It was me that Abraham and Sarah was give to. Little Sarah, Tom. She's a woman and I know her well. She's a bright and dancing thing. Too full of fancies and so must marry young. But Abraham. He's truly something that's not for me to meddle with. And he must have his way. Well, I'd rather give in than fight two women, the living and the dead. All right, Abe. She's sought and I'm sought. What about you? Well, I reckon I could do with a little more schooling. You reckon you could do with a little more schooling? Who are you that I should break a china cup and toss a tantrum over?
She was proud of that new wood floor, and she kept it so clean you could eat off it. And of course, she read my love by now, but never let on until the time was ready, and she sassed me back. Abraham, look, Mom! Abraham! Keep your shirts on, what's the fuss? Ain't you got more sense than to come stampeding in here on a clean floor? Why don't you hang a sign outside warning a man off these premises? If you're gonna raise the floor, get, get! Oh! With me still looking most offended, but knowing I was in the family now, despite a little floor tracking, I determined I'd get even with a joke. And somehow it was this fool boy skylarking that made me shed my final guard and turn at last to Sally Bush. Uh, it was right thoughtful of you, Abe, to build up a fire. We're so enjoyed our evening, we took the time gathering dandelion greens. Why, surely, ma'am. You'll just excuse me while I finish, before the light is gone. You cleaned the rabbits, too. Well, if that's because you're sorry you tracked up my floor, Abe, I'll forgive <laughs> Sarah! If there's anything else you ladies want, now don't hesitate to ask. You darn fool! <laughs> Chairman, honored guests of the Lincoln family of Spencer County, Indiana. Friends, we have before us a peculiar scientific phenomenon, a veritable supernatural event causing public disturbance and in particular an outbreak of violence on the part of one Sally Bush Lincoln. How are we to examine this aforesaid dilemma? In a spirit of rash fury, as evinced by the aforesaid Sally Bush Lincoln, what is the solution? Friends, is there a solution? <laughs> are you hurt? Mr. Chairman, I am not to be thus upset by merely a bump on my beat. You're a sassy and conceited to be a coddled and loved by a stepmaw. Who are you, Abraham, to tear so strangely at my heart? After Lincoln's death in 1865, a man named Herndon journeyed out to see Sally to try and find out what it was that had given her such an influence over Abraham's life. And she replied to him in the very gentle words of quite an old person. I took some of them down and would like to read them for you now. Abe, she said, was a good boy, and I can say what scarcely one woman, a mother, can say in a thousand, that his mind and mine, what little I had, seemed to run together in the same channel. I had a son, John, who was raised with Abe. Both were good boys but I must say, both now being dead, that Abe was the best boy I ever saw or ever expect to see. And of course, Sally had no secret at all, or if it was, it was the fact that the instant she set her foot inside the cabin that winter night, she'd already made her mind up that she was not a stepmother, nor were the children inside to be stepchildren, but her own. She merely had to wait until they discovered this for themselves. 